Even sleepiness cannot stop the time once again for the real people multi-game solitary mega tournament. Some hot action happened last night when I was uh, doing the choices for the people. Um, uh, to start the turn, Little Red played, Oi, it's my go! Which was quite a smart move, I thought, on his part. Um, he had just discarded an empire, so doing that would let him restart an empire and, and retake that blue counter set that he got rid of. That was actually what he, he was planning all along. It wasn't a smart move per se, but it was a planned move. And anytime I can get a planned move out of these six players, um, I feel good about it because <laughs> there's not a lot of those. Um, unfortunately, he was going to be taking the turn from Cowboy, and Cowboy blocked it with a bad augury. So that was the hot action I was alluding to. Um, so we are going to probably have some new empires this turn. I haven't really decided what yet. Uh, it's probably actually going to be Giraffe, because she's going to be the first person who has the opportunity to do a start empire. And so let's let's do that. Not any super good choices for Giraffe, so I really had to think about it. She definitely wants to start something. You don't get this opportunity very often, so even if she can't really um, have the best empire, it's better to grab something while she can. So she's choosing between uh, the cushions and the guptas. Now here's here's what she would do with either of them. The guptas, she would actually be taking a chunk out of her own empire, because they start in Hyderabad here. Um, but that would be nice, because then she could use them to kind of cancel out Little Red's Sadavahana there. Uh, Sadavahana. Set of a, I don't know how to say that. Um, the cushions, they would start in Transoxiana. She could either, they, they wouldn't really be able to score, I don't think. And neither would the Guptas unless she decided to replace um, her Harappans with them after, after you know, the, the, the dust settled and everything. Um, but primarily it would be, you know, a stick to use on Little Red. The cushions, it would be a stick to use against... Um, against Melky there because uh, Melky is 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 uh, competing with giraffes Romans for um, Europe so which which is a better choice well she likes the Romans better I mean they're they're a better long-term um, empire than the Harappans they they have more scoring opportunities and that's nice um, the Harappans are kind of dear to her heart in a way. Uh, Melky is also more of a more of a challenge to her in terms of points. Not that she's necessarily really wor that worried about that right now, but um, so there's that. Uh, Little Red is more directly confronting her, however, with the Sadavahana. Um, so I was kind of torn. I had to go to her card, um, and I just thought I would tell you how it all balanced out. So if we look here, she has a secret fantasy to eat her way out of a chocolate vat. Now if you notice, these are black counters, so that tells me she wants to go here and Transoxiana with the cushions. Now at the same time, she doesn't always like people, sure. I give people the benefit of the doubt. So since he hasn't directly attacked her yet, seems like that, that should cancel out the eating the way out of the chocolate vat. Because give him the benefit of uh, the doubt. He hasn't done anything. He's just sitting, you know, he's growing, and that's fine. They can compete that way. And so that that puts it still kind of back to where we were. And so then I went to most proud of my flowers. I could see India being her flower. So I think she is going to go with the Guptas. Um, draft in the Origins game is established as sort of a defensive uh, player, too. She's done some offensive things in this game, but she likes to kind of seal up her territory and have her strong home, even though she travels around in real life. We have just finished the trade in progress phase. Where's my finger? There it is, of the game. And it's been super good for Cowboy. Uh, because of the position, mostly because of the positioning of the Han here, people have been, um, a lot of people chose to trade this turn because they just need to get stronger units for a variety of reasons. People have been choosing to, to trade with the Han because the Han aren't in, engaged in any of the, the conflicts involved. So the Harappans traded with the Han. They didn't want to trade with 
uh, the Phoenicians. And they didn't want to trade with um, either of Little Red's people because Giraffe is kind of at war with Little Red in general. Um, likewise, the Chams traded with the Han because for the same reason. Didn't want to trade with Cowboys, um, Siamese, or any, or any of Giraffe's people. Um, and then what else? Oh, the Han also traded themselves with the Finns, and so that helped the Finns out. The Finns, in turn, traded with the Phoenicians, partially because didn't want to trade with the Romans here. Um, didn't want to trade with the Han, because the Han just got a bunch of trades. Um, and uh, wanted to bump Cowboys, um, Cowboys, Phoenicians ahead of Giraffe. Uh, which is kind of a clever play by Milky. Um, bumped them ahead, so that's going to make it harder for her to score points with the Harappans. Giraffe is the next person up from, from Milky in terms of points. That that pumped Phoenicians very close to that magic 21, so we're going to see an elimination very, very soon, I think. Very, very soon, because they actually have the most um, points right now. Uh, oh, because I've been using this die thing. Cowboy was able to steal a science card from the Finns because um, the Phoenicians just totally dominated them. Um, and so that, that gave him the automatic advance. And he's going to advance to there at the end of the, the turn unless, um, you know, he loses some science. I don't know how that's going to happen, but it's possible. We are in the midst of the maneuver phase. And uh, so far, Phoenicians have spread out. The Romans are kind of trying to organize themselves. They still have a lot of disorder to deal with. Luckily they have Spartacus. Any space Spartacus goes to uh, doesn't have disorder anymore because he's a populist. Uh, because he has the powers of Caesar and Spartacus combined. Um, and then Little Red's Sat Satavahana. Uh, I can't say. I need a nap. Um, they, they came down here which I think is maybe telling as to what his plans are. They came down here, uh, won a decisive victory, a fairly decisive victory against um, Giraffe's Harappans there. She didn't have very strong forces in the peninsula, but they had the mountain advantage. So it was actually a close close fight, um, but he ended up with a lot more victory dice just because of how the dice came out. It was a 10 to 9 strength difference. Um, and he stole a glory point from her, so that's going to give him a better chance of surviving this turn. I don't know if... Uh, Flush has anything up his sleeve to save himself. Um, I, I know I wasn't expecting this to be the turn that uh, this was going to happen. Uh, we'll see if it is. Still in maneuver, uh, Runt made a telling move with her Aztecs. Uh, the, the decision was whether to, to go and try and take on the Plains Americans and compete there. Whoops, sorry, I, I bumped the thing. Um, I'm holding the camera kind of in a in an alternative fashion. Um, or go down towards South America and just spread out. She's doing that. Uh, the key word I used to kind of make that decision was, sorry, I used a card, uh, content. I think she's content to just getting getting the points from the cities um, and competing just by spreading out rather than having to directly fight him. I think that'll, that's worked out well for her in Africa as well to just kind of sit back and spread out and not really uh, rock any sort of uh, combative boat. Uh, Flush, on the other hand, he is grabbing at straws. He, he does have maybe a chance just because of our new system. We'll see what happens. We have a, a fight here. Um, Little Red had been pulling his forces to the borders because he was worried there. Flush popped in in the middle and is now attacking Cambodia uh, with with great, uh, much stronger forces. And I, actually, you can't use this card, so that's not going to help um, because they have more of those things. Uh, so let's see, we have a 8, 10. Now, Little Red has to put this guy in the back because if he puts him in the front, the, the elephant negates his powers. So it's 10 to 3. And I'm going to roll that up and I'll get back to you and let, let you know what happens. I said I'm going to cover this with a bit more detail because this could be um, this could mean someone's elimination. Uh, probably does it's out out um, out with this. There's a chance that that two two glory points could switch places, so that would bring him down two and flush up two. So that that would put him one point away, and then then it would be up to the rest of the turn scoring. 
All right, so yellow is flush, red is little red. Makes kind of sense. That's really helpful to me, actually, when I'm tired to have uh, red mean little red. So you can see here, flush, you know, I mean, he had a lot more dice to roll, but he also had a better roll. We have our defense here. These are three defensive dice, and these are attack dice. There's not a lot of choices Little Red has. So let's play this out. Flush has more attack dice, so he's going to go first. He's going to attack with that one. Little Red's choice is to counterattack, really. He can either do that or do nothing. Maybe it would be better to do nothing. So let's play this out. If he counterattacks, then Flush can just defend that and get, get a point, and then, hmm... It's in Little Red's best interest to make this end as quickly as possible, though. So I think he's going... Well, if he does nothing, then Flush gets both of these dice. So I think he will counterattack. Um, but he has to give Flush a die to do that. And then Flush will... I guess he could either defend it or counterattack it. If he counterattacks it, it's over. If he defends it, he gets another shot. I think he's going to defend it. Give him the die, and these go down here, and then he's going to attack, and then there's nothing he can do about it, so he loses that, and two more dice. So it's going to be four to one. Flush is going to be able to use these four to get um, to get one point from Little Red, not two. Then Little Red has one die to use on him. Uh, does he even? I'll take money, take two bucks from him. And brown. There we go. My heart is beating very fast, and it's not good for me. Uh, Flush got a very uh, uh, a helpful draw for Destiny. Was able to play three artifacts: adopted democracy, Confucianism, and put down a lighthouse in Japan. There, that gave him three points, and now the two gentlemen are tied. Um, so it's it's really going to come down to how their empires score at the end of this round. Uh, unless, of course, something happens to um, Cowboys commanding science lead. I, I really don't think that's going to happen, though. Uh, just milky, civilized action, and then the then the turn's over, and I'm, it's just so sudden. I, I would have tried to sleep better last night if I had known this was going to happen, that it was going to be another time to say goodbye. I thought it was just going to be another kind of fairly static turn, but it's, it's funny how things can just leap out at you. White tigers. So you're not usually with me when I'm tallying glory, and the same is true this time, but I'll kind of walk you through with what I do. I start with the person whose turn it is and tally their glory and then add it to the track. I don't want to show you the track yet. And then move the way around, all the way around. So, um, start with Cowboy, did his, he got like seven, she got, Giraffe got about what she normally does. Then Little Red did something kind of interesting. He played this card, Glory Pour Moi. Now, when it's a card like that, that's between players, except for the Oi, it's my go, because that seems like it's very player oriented. I just tally wreaths. So, he could have, um, he had more wreaths. Then, then uh, Flush here. Flush only has two, and he has several with the champs. However, Flush had this card, Bad Augury, which canceled the Glory Pour Moi. Right. So it made so Little Red got three. And Flush would still get to score his. Now, went around to Runt. Runt got her bunch for the Pharaonic Egyptians. She's only scoring one off the Aztecs right now. Then it was... Uh, Flush's turn. He gets one for the Siamese because they don't have a they don't have anything else other than just their homeland. Um, and then the Japanese, he gets one for their homeland and one for wheat. That would give him uh, three, correct? Which is exactly what Little Red got. However, Flush had in his hand, I am truly glorious. He's, he's been saving that. He actually had it last turn, too, but he decided to save it, and he held it. And so that let him double the Japanese's amount of two to four, so he took, got a total of five. One, two, three, four, five. Just under the wire, Flush made it. Um, 
I I really was, wasn't expecting that. I thought he had a chance of coming back. I didn't know that he was going to. I didn't know that it was going to be this turn. I mean, I've, I've gone on and on about that. I guess I'm trying to be succinct. Um, so Little Red, our, our elderly gentleman, we lost our elderly woman during the Origins game. Hopefully I don't lose his card. He's a fun guy. I think he'd be a fun guy to play games with. Um, reminds me of some, some, some people at my game club. Um, not sure if he'd sit down to play a game like this, though. I think I feel like he's always on the go. He's in international sales. He'd like to stay home for a month because he travels so much. If he could just stay home for a month, that would be wonderful. He's been in five countries in the same day. His pet peeve? Yuppie drivers. He'd like to meet Walter Cronkite. His personal motto is, if you want it done, do it yourself. He's most proud of his family. His reputation in high school was not outstanding. Three words that describe him, and really the words that I've used the most in deciding what he does in these games is, do it now. Little Red was always an immediate go-getter. He doesn't, you know, if he has a if if he has a strategy in mind, he just implements it immediately. If an empire is not working out, he discards him. He's a uh, he's a true salesman. Gosh, look at that face. Imagine like growing all those wrinkles. Maybe some of you watching have, but you know, I, I look at these guys. For, so so much in glances, you know, just glancing at them. I rarely get a chance to really like look up close and see what they actually look like. Um, get kind of vague impressions of their faces rather than actually see these these crevices. And remarkable, remarkable. He earned them, and now, my friend, you've earned a rest. Say so long to Little Red. He'll be joining us again in the loser's bracket of the Real People Multi-Game Solitary Mega Tournament, but he's no longer with us in 7x7 seven seven ages.